And I know a lot of you have always heard that expression that you want to build your golf swing from the ground up and you wanna make sure that you drive the golf swing from your legs and your hips. So let me explain to you what we've been able to see through all of this data that we can track now with the best players in the world. What we can see is that if a player sets up in a neutral position where they're 50-50 at address, we're gonna see that players increase the pressure on their trail side somewhere between 70 and 90%. That's a pretty big increase from 50%, 70 to 90% of the weight moves underneath their trail leg as the backswing becomes more complete. The hips will rotate somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees. What I also want you to understand is that when you look at the players at impact, that pressure is gonna go from 70 to 90% of the weight underneath their trail leg to the point of contact where it's now gonna be upwards of 80 to 90% underneath their lead foot. That's a huge change. And their hips are now gonna be open somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees. So the hips go from this really closed position with a lot of weight underneath that trail foot to the hips now pretty open with a ton of our weight underneath our lead foot. That means there's a lot of movement that's taking place in the golf swing. Just like any other hitting or throwing sport, there is a balance of horizontal, rotational, and vertical forces that are taking place. And we're gonna help you find that perfect blend today. Remember, this drill is gonna feel like a lot of information, but the whole goal here is to simplify the processes of movement by having some very simple checkpoints that each and every one of you can latch onto. Now, how I like to do this drill is I like to get it set up to where I have an alignment stick on the ground that's pointed in the direction of my target. I'm gonna have my feet parallel to that line. I'm also gonna have a line off the lead side of my body that's coming off of the, the target line as a 45 degree angle, and the same thing off of the trail side of my body. What we're gonna be doing here when we start really trying to get things up to speed is we're gonna be working on trying to get a significant amount of pressure underneath our trail ankle and getting our hips turned so that the belt line is gonna be parallel to the line in the backswing. And then we're gonna to try to get the pressure over to our lead foot to where our belt is now gonna be parallel to the line that's on the ground here on the lead side of the body. Now, in order to do this, there is going to be a big, big movement from your upper body in order to help get that pressure tracing from 50-50 at address to 90 on the trail and then 90 on the lead. Over time, you're gonna start working on trying to dial this in, but you're gonna have some checkpoints that you're gonna look for to know if you're really dialed in and you're ready to start hitting golf balls with it. Now, before I start taking you down the pathway of how we're gonna do this drill, what I want you to do is I want you to understand the position that we're gonna be working towards as the end result. And that's gonna be your impact position from your lead leg and your lead hip. So what we wanna do from a static address position is we wanna take our hips and we wanna shift them over to our lead side to where the hip socket, the knee, and the ankle form a straight line. Now, if you were to rotate your hips open to where this line is parallel to the line that's on the ground, that rotation should be done by your lead side obliques but what we wanna do here is we wanna understand that because I rotated my hip back with all of that pressure underneath my ankle, my, my lead leg has now gone to kind of a passively straight position. It's not locked out ramrod straight, it's just passively straight if I were standing here having a conversation with you. That's the position that we're gonna be trying to work towards getting to. When you can get to this position, the lead, length, lead ankle's got 90% of the weight underneath it, their hips are open 45 degrees. If you can get there, as your hands and arms are going whipping past your body, then there's a pretty good chance that you have good sequence now. That's what you're gonna be working towards. Now, how we're gonna work this drill though, is we're gonna start out like you're a small child and I'm holding your hand in public and we're gonna do things in a very broken down sort of way with excessive amounts of movement. That's what you have to feel in order to be able to make real changes. You've gotta push yourself to feel something dramatically different. So what I want you to do is I want you to have a golf ball down on the ground where your eyes are gonna be focused on. And I like having a golf ball focused on the ground for one very specific reason. When you start introducing movement to your eyes that you're not used to, and you're looking up in a mirror or looking at a camera or somebody else, when you look down at the golf ball, it's gonna significantly change things for you. So train this stuff with a golf ball and your eyes being focused down there so that you can start getting used to this excessive amounts of movement that you're not used to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on getting the pressure to move 90% of our weight underneath our trail ankle, 90% of our weight underneath our lead ankle. And we're just gonna do this back and forth just for a minute. We're gonna go back and forth, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%. In order for us to be able to get 
the pressure moving from one side of the body to the other, you have to allow your head and chest to move. You cannot just shift your pelvis and expect to get that sort of pressure under there. So allow your head to move on both sides of the golf ball here. It's gonna feel very excessive. But what you wanna remember is, is that this excessive horizontal movement that I'm putting in place is gonna to get toned back very quickly and start to look more like a golf swing when you start introducing rotational movement to the mix. So now what the second step here is gonna be is we're gonna be working on making some small swings here. So at the end of the day, this drill is gonna help you get to kind of like a nine to three at first, really get your sequence button up there, and then you can go into full swing territory. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna think about 90% of our weight moving underneath our trail ankle, but now we're gonna turn our hips so that they're gonna be 45 degrees closed. So pressure onto my ankle, turn my hips so that they're 45 degrees closed, okay? And from this position, what you wanna do is you wanna move that 90% back underneath the lead ankle and you wanna turn your hips open so that they're gonna be 45 degrees open. Now, we're gonna do that without having to look back at the camera. So 90, turn, 90 to my lead ankle, turn. It still looks like a ton of movement right now because it is. 90 under my trail ankle, turn. 90 under my lead ankle, turn. Okay, focus on the pressure where it's moving through your feet. Just by thinking about the weight moving underneath your ankle joints, it's forcing your hips to start to move dynamically. If you are closed with your hips going back and your weight went to the forward part of the foot, then your hips are gonna stay closed. By focusing on the weight moving underneath the ankle joints, it's teaching your hips how to move dynamically. It's teaching them how to have that perfect blend of horizontal and rotational movement. So I want you to be able to get comfortable with this for a few minutes. So pressure, turn your hips. Pressure, turn your hips. Pressure, turn your hips. Pressure, turn your hips. Okay, allowing the head and the chest to move along with it. Now, once you start feeling that, you're like, okay, I've got 90%, I've seen my hips working, I know that I'm getting back into that good impact position that we just rehearsed. Now what we wanna do is we wanna add the final piece here of what the shoulder should be doing inside of this movement. What you wanna remember is, is that the equation that we're gonna work off of here today, even though this is not a, a blanket sort of statement for every, per, every person that produces good efficiency in the golf swing, is that your shoulders are gonna have turned 90 degrees while your hips have turned 45. Your hips are gonna go from 45 degrees closed to 45 degrees open, which means at the point of contact, your shoulders should be square to the target line. So that's why we have that other line on the ground is that you're gonna to try to come back and make sure that your shoulders are perfectly square. Now, we're not gonna be trying to make that full 90 degrees of turn just yet. That's just too much movement for you but we are gonna make, make swings to where we're going to a nine o'clock position and then to a three o'clock position. When you get those hips opened up, I want you to let those arms swing through. You're gonna be letting things fly through there, but you wanna feel like your shoulders are staying square to the target line. So how this is gonna look is we're gonna go ahead and pressure shift onto, onto our trail foot, 90%, turn the hips. Pressure shift, I'm not letting my shoulders turn past a square position. Opening the hips up, 45, letting the arms swing through to three o'clock. Now, at impact, because we're looking at this from a two-dimensional space, what a lot of you are gonna feel or see is that it's gonna look to you like my shoulders are actually open. When in fact, my shoulders are very square. Okay, I promise you, I just don't wanna hit the microphone with the club here. I am perfectly square. The reason why it looks open is because in order to get my hips rotated 45 degrees open, my core had to help, and that's why it's turned open like this. But my shoulders can move independently from that. My shoulders are square to this line that's on the ground. You're gonna use that as your reference point. So when you start going 90 underneath that lead ankle and opening the hips up, you wanna make sure that your shoulders feel square as your arms go whipping past your body. That's the entire drill. How did we get here? We started out by looking down at the golf ball, getting our weight onto our left side, opening the hips up. Okay, that's the position that we're gonna ultimately try to work to. Then we started to feel the pressure moving through our ankles, moving back and forth. Okay, now we're gonna start feeling pressure and turn our hips. Pressure and turn our hips. Pressure, turn, pressure, turn. Now our eyes are staying really focused on the golf ball while we're doing this. Can feel my head moving a little bit here. Definitely feel the pressure changing from one side of the body to the other. 
And once you start feeling proficient with that, now you can start making some nine to three swings. Okay? And you wanna look at it on camera and you wanna see that you've got a little bit of head movement off the ball and a little bit of head movement back into position. And then you wanna make sure that you can see the hands and arms releasing when your shoulders are nice and square. When you start to see that sort of movement, you can start picking up the pace. You follow that level of progression right there and now you've just started to lay down the foundation of proper movement. This is not designed to start putting you into full speed right away. You need to take your time and learn the movements first. Keep it simple, feel the movement, know exactly where you're working to, and give yourself some goals. In this practice session, I'm gonna to try to get a really good solid amount of right around 100 to 150 reps where I'm working nine to three with good pressure trace, good hip action, and letting my arms release with my shoulders feeling like they're nice and square. If you do that, the sky's the limit. Allow your head and chest to move, let it follow along with what your legs and hips are doing, and you're gonna be cooking with some fire here. So let's go back through it again. So static address position, eyes down at the golf ball, shift your hips left, open them up, okay? I don't have a lot of mobility in my hips, so I'm probably not getting 45 degrees open, but I'm probably getting to about 35. Come back to an address position, start feeling excessive amounts of movement, okay, feeling the pressure through my ankles, now I'm gonna feel that same pressure, turn, pressure, turn. Okay, now I'm gonna start making some swings. So it felt like my shoulders were square as my hips were opening up. Okay, if you feel good enough about it, you can try to hit a shot with it. Just keep your hand and arm tension very light. So there you have it, folks. A good, simple way for you to start the processes of being able to create proper movement in your golf swing. Allowing your legs and your hips to work. Feel like you have some freedom of movement. Allow the head and the chest to work along with it. Really start dialing things in. Have some good positions in your mind that you're trying to achieve. And then be disciplined and diligent as you work through the processes. This is not a drill that's designed to go fast at first. It's designed to help you change the way that you shift and move in your golf swing once and for all. So you're not out there just doing the same thing over and over again. Push yourself, allow the hands and arms to come back in there, allow the, the golf club and the golf ball to get back in there on the sooner side so that you're training a real movement pattern and the sky's the limit. And it's, uh, I know it's cold where a lot of you are right now, but it is warm and it's so warm that people are visiting Central Florida right now and still taking advantage of our water slides that we got back here and they are screaming their heads off at a different level today. So I just wanted to let you know that just in case you thought there was somebody in my bag trying to get out back here. In fact, they're over, there they go.